So Aries archetypes, Aries themes, right? So Aries is a constellation of the ram. It's cardinal fire. So this is really active. It's really passionate. It's full of initiative. Uh, sometimes kind of lacking in follow through. Uh, it's the first sign of the zodiac, or at least it's considered the first sign of the zodiac, right? And so as such, uh, it takes on the energy of, of the newborn, right? So this is brand new. It's so full of potential. It's optimistic. It's uh, completely unrealized potential. Uh, Aries is also the warrior. That It's the archetype of the warrior, the hired man or the mercenary, right? It's the trailblazing pioneer and explorer. And I got the sun right in my face this time of day, apparently. So forgive me. <laughs> um, so Aries is naturally uh, competitive, right? It's filled with this drive to win. Uh, and Aries can really kind of see personal challenges sometimes where none are intended. And, and that can especially be true when we have Mars out of bounds. Um, because we tend to, with out-of-bounds planets, we tend to go first, right? Without thinking necessarily. We want to react. Um, and it's really kind of an extreme kind of reaction sometimes. Um, so that seeing personal challenges where none are intended is a real big deal right now. And the other thing that I would say is an issue that you really want to be aware of um, is... <clears throat> Picking your battles, I guess, is the way that I want to say it. Like, when you're about to get riled up, when you're about to charge headlong into that conflict, especially right now, stop and think, is this worth fighting about? Is this worth my energy to engage in conflict over? Uh, because not everything that comes up right now is going to be worth it. But all of it could be real tempting to engage in conflict around. But really kind of be considerate and be cognizant of because of that tendency to see challenges where aren't intended and because of that tendency to kind of not, to just kind of go off half cocked into conflict, right? And not be cognizant about, about choosing your battles. Um, Mars is the planet, because he's the ruler of Aries, he's the planet through which we assert ourselves in life, right? Not only by taking initiative to begin new things, but also by refusing things that aren't in our best interest or that don't meet our needs, or that might hurt us, things that violate our boundaries in some way, right? So Mars ultimately is about how we assert ourselves, how we engage in competition, how we establish and maintain boundaries, how we deal with conflict, and especially around boundaries. So this is a skill that we normally begin developing during our first Mars return, which happens right around two years of age, right? We call it terrible twos. It's when your kid first learns the word no and they want to use it all the time, right? So this is a normal, healthy part of human development. Uh, but what happens is sometimes when we're that young, because we're still, we're learning this skill, we're developing it, right? And, and uh, sometimes the adults around us don't necessarily recognize and respect the process uh, and that can leave us as adults with crappy boundaries later on right and so uh, that's something to be aware of with the new moon in Mars um, you can use it to tap into that establishing boundaries in in a more healthy and constructive way right that takes bravery and courage and so that's a way you can channel that Mars out of bounds energy in a courageous way that's also healthy and constructive, right? And so that's the good news, is that you can use the new moon energy in that way to invite that in, uh, developing a skill of assertiveness, right? And so sometimes you have to put yourself first. Sometimes you have to meet your own needs first, and it can take practice to communicate that. New moon in Aries is a great time to start. Uh, and so what I would encourage you to do, so kind of, keeping in mind the area of life represented by uh, the house that Aries occupies in your natal chart. Consider, these are some prompts and questions. So Aries being the archetype of the newborn, the explorer, the pioneer, that going into new territory, or the warrior or the hired man. How can you begin to, exp how can you begin to approach life with the wonder of a newborn, right? How can you 
open yourself up to new ways of doing things and be more adventurous and especially adventurous around exploring that untapped potential. What do you stand to gain by doing that? Really consider what might you gain if you were to do that. And so if this speaks to you, if this is like one area where like, oh, okay, maybe I do need to start exploring new things and getting new inputs and venturing into new territory and opening myself to up to new experiences and new people, new new ideas, new concept, new information. What do you stand to gain by doing that? How can you venture into unexplored territory and how would it benefit you? How can you make conflict constructive rather than destructive? With this one, I think it'd be really wise if uh, you're wanting to use this new moon to deal with conflict. And this, this could be particularly good for someone who's got this new moon on the first and seventh house axis, or even on the third and ninth, because that has to do with communication and we're gonna have Mercury wrapped up in all this. Uh, come up with a couple of options for uh, dealing with conflict constructively, and then just kind of practice them. Right? Practice implementing them. This is something, I mean, you can practice it in your head. You could practice it with a friend. Uh, explore, you know, maybe consider learning something like nonviolent communication, right? That, uh, so there's, there's tools, there's skills that we can learn and develop that help us make conflict constructive rather than destructive. And so with this new moon, if conflict is an issue that you're dealing with, maybe tap into it to explore new ways. Uh, of dealing with that okay and then for some of you I know the discussion has been healthy boundaries <laughs> establishing and maintaining healthy boundaries and so in this area I would encourage you to explore skills that you can learn skills that you can develop uh, boundaries are a common issue for a lot of people there's a lot of tools out there uh, there's a lot of free knowledge uh, use the internet to explore ways that uh, you can develop skills to establish and maintain healthy boundaries. And then also spend some time, and I would say especially tap into Mercury about this and do your journaling. Explore what do healthy boundaries look like for me? Because some of us are just like crap at figuring that out, right? <laughs> we just haven't had enough practice. Well, guess what? You can always practice and you can always refine what that healthy boundary looks like for you, especially if you found that the boundaries that you have aren't working or you're failing to set them, right? Or to failing to reinforce them, right? And then also remember that if you are regularly engaged with someone who has no respect for your boundaries, it's okay to remove them from your equation. You can love people from a distance, that's allowed. Uh, so keep that in mind. Moving someone out of your life or moving you out of their life, those are perfectly acceptable responses uh, when someone isn't consistently respecting your own personal boundaries. Okay? Rosalind says, partying is new territory for me because I'm an introvert. Me too. I scored 100% on introvert. Introvert, now as fuck, she said. Okay, I want to be adventurous about socializing and making friends and not being a hermit forever. This speaks to me so much. I definitely need to be more open to adventures uh, than crying about my fear of making connections. Today I made a lot of friends without realizing it. I'm glad I did. Yay! The new moon is conjunct my natal Mercury in the ninth house. Perfect. Opposite natal Chiron in the third. It's been crazy and I'm opening up and socializing more. It's been beautiful. I want to let myself explore this more and let go of my fears holding me back. Thank you so much, Phaedra. So it's really cool. You have Mercury in your ninth house. So uh, with the new moon conjunct that, uh, I would say keep an eye out. You could get news or a letter. You could hear from or meet someone uh, who's a foreigner. You could uh, get news from really far away, right? Someone like a friend or family who lives really far from you. Uh, but that's kind of cool, and I would definitely have that antenna up for meeting new people who are from either foreign countries or from cultures that are really, really different from your own native culture, uh, Rosalind. That's kind of cool. Uh, so for this, um, so for this new moon, let me kind of get back to finishing up uh, on this issue around boundaries. 
um, consider whether or not you need to learn to say no more often to protect your own energy and space, right? And if that's the case, I would encourage you to come up with a plan for practicing saying no. And I will tell you, it gets easier every time you do it. So if you can get past that fear, right? Comfort zones are expanded by discomfort. Isn't that what they say? Uh, so I want you to grab your pen and paper, set your intentions around what you want to manifest. Uh, be cognizant of the outcome that you want. Where we have uh, Mars being a little wonky, to put it nicely, and Mercury about to join him, uh, I would say be real specific about the outcome that you want. You want to channel that as constructively and specifically as possible. So as you write out your intention statement and as you do your visualizing and as you come up with your affirmation around what it is you intend with this new moon, be as detailed as possible and be aware of what you wouldn't want, want to manifest enough that you can identify what it is you would want as an alternative, right? Like, I don't want you to focus on what you don't want because you get what you give your attention to, right? But if it's okay if you're doing it in from the orientation of problem solving. And so in this case, uh, with this particular new moon, because we have so much wild energy, I would say consider ways that you wouldn't want uh, enough to let that inform the outcome that you do want if that's necessary for you. Okay, so grab your pen and paper. You're going to write down your statement. Take a moment to visualize the outcome that you want for the intention. And then you're going to uh, draw out what you want to manifest or come up with a uh, like an affirmation statement that you want to practice over the coming weeks and the rest of the month. I would say at least while you're doing your initial steps for this initiation. We're going to take a few minutes to complete this step. i got to find my pen. I did not grab paper before I started the broadcast because I was busy chasing, you know, windows. Um... But we'll take a few minutes out to complete this step. If you want me to recap the prompts, let me know. And then Jonna says, this is a new moon I'm going to have to sit with and work on. Lots of crap to think about. I agree. I'm so glad I caught this broadcast. I'm glad you did too. I'm going to I'm gonna sit with this one for a minute too. So we'll, it'll be good. It'll be good. Oh, I'm grabbing scratch paper. And what I really need is the new moon journal. So hold on. Maybe there's some wisdom in here for us. Let's see. Maybe we have some wisdom. This is really right. All the intentions. So if anyone keeps a new moon journal, this is kind of an interesting thing. I'd be curious to know. Flip back through it sometime. And have a look at all the intentions that you've set uh, in conjunction with the new moons and the broadcasts that we do here. And let me know what you've manifested. I'd be curious to know. Like, especially like kind of looking back through through the beginning of the year. I'd be curious. So here is today's moon journal quote. It says, the moon has extreme temperatures. It can get as hot as 110 degrees Celsius during the day and as cold as minus 180 degrees Celsius at night. That's frigid. That's more than frigid. Grab a jacket. Okay, so here we go. Got it? Set your intentions. How you can be open to doing things in new ways. I can be adventurous, pioneering, take a more constructive approach to conflict, or practice saying no and creating or reinforcing boundaries. That's where we're at. Everybody go. So it's kind of an interesting new moon, isn't it? Hi, Dylan. Hi, Williams. Good to have you with us. So we're just working through our intention setting um, around the new moon in Aries theme. So we were talking about how you can be open to doing things in new ways, how you can be adventurous, um, how you can engage the world with the wonder of a newborn, uh, because Aries is about untapped potential, right? Uh, how you can be pioneering, um, where Aries is about conflict, 
we're exploring how you can take creative approaches to conflict, especially because there's a lot of really conflict-oriented energy going on right now with the new moon that we have, with what uh, Mars is doing, with what Mercury's doing, what Mercury's about to be doing later in the month. Um, and then we were also talking about uh, practicing saying no, creating and reinforcing boundaries, because uh, Mars in our chart, uh, Mars really speaks to uh, our asserting ourself and establishing and maintaining boundaries. And so those are kind of some of the things that we were talking about in terms of our intention setting tonight. Um, and I would encourage you, if you get the chance, uh, to go back and listen to the prompts in a lot more in depth, and especially the first part of the broadcast where we talked about um, this particular new moon and just the kind of craziness going on with it and how we can deal with it because there's a, we want to channel Mars really constructively, we want to channel Mercury really constructively, and so we talked about some ways that you can do that. Um, so I'll share. I know some folks have already shared what it is they're setting intentions around. If anyone wants to share what they've come up with, please do. Or if you want to share the affirmation that you're going to be working with. So I'm kind of, I'm guilty. I'm bag booking uh, with this one uh, just because it's so highly personal, um, really highly personal. I have this in my 11th house, which is friends, organizations, hopes, and dreams. And so, of course, I'm working uh, with hopes and dreams right now because y'all know that's that's my favorite thing in the 11th house, the hopes and dreams. And so uh, I have a very specific hope uh, that I'm working with here. And actually, I, I probably have two. I think, I'll, I think I'll incorporate my other one in. And so what I wrote here is I intend to courageously pursue. Uh, my most closely held dream with a fearless attitude and with excitement for new experiences to come and that I intend to bravely face any fears conscious or unconscious of the unknown or of conflict uh, in order to set myself on the proper course so that's big that's big feels big anyway I think I'm gonna spend more time with that because now that I think about it I have, I have a couple of hopes or maybe one hope and one dream I don't know plus plus I gotta do something new so 11th house right friends and organizations which can include the work you do uh, with like nonprofits and things right and so I usually volunteer with a local nonprofit to do face painting uh, for a day for kids uh, right around this time of year, and so I think I'm gonna have to reach out to them, because uh, I didn't hear from them last year, and uh, so I didn't get to do it, and I usually do it every year, and I miss painting faces on kids is hella fun, guys. Like, you have no idea how cool it is just to make kids smile and happy and laugh all day long for free. Oh my goodness, it's just like the best thing in the world. It's the best thing in the world, and I gotta do that at least once a year and get my fill. Gotta do it, and I missed last year, so. I think that's what I'll be doing too with this new moon is uh, reaching out to some friends of mine who I know are involved with that so I can go paint some faces. So I don't really have any, uh, well I guess I do have some announcements. I'll give this a moment and see if anyone wants to share anything in the comments beyond uh, what Rosalind and Jonna have shared already. Um, so with the announcements you want to read the May overview and short reports if you haven't already. They're up on the website. Uh, definitely read them. Read the short report for your sidereal sun sign and your sidereal rising sign. Um, and then uh, on Monday, join me at 1.30 p.m. on the uh, Mystic Physic Facebook page. We're going to have the next Sidereal Insights Usher update. And so we'll be going over more kind of on current astrological transits and how you can best align with them uh, and make them work for you. And that can be kind of challenging right about now just because we have this, this weird stuff going on. Uh, and then also be sure to, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you won't ever miss a broadcast. I actually did send out the reminder email this time, so kind of proud of myself, pat myself on the back there, right? Because I don't always do that. Uh, but if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, then you don't ever miss a broadcast. And stay tuned for, I'm going to be opening up for uh, pre-orders for the 2020 Ultimate Astrological Planner, which is probably most relevant for folks who are looking for the Academic Planner because that will begin uh, for August. So, we'll be setting that up for pre-orders pretty soon, and I'll let you know in the group and on the Mystic Physic Facebook page, and probably by email too, when those open up for pre-orders. And thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Jonna says that sounds super cool. I agree, Jonna. So thanks everyone. Good luck. 
with this new moon. This seems like probably one of the most challenging new moons in Aries that we have dealt with during the course of all of these broadcasts. And we've been doing this for a couple years now. So take a deep breath, meditate, channel your Mars, physical activity, running, any kind of sports, not necessarily competitive sports because you could overreact in competition, right? So maybe stick with something that you can do independently or something like, you know, if, if you, if you, uh, maybe if you go running, like you could run with a friend, it's not really like, you don't have to be competitive with that. Right. But find a way to challenge this energy. And, uh, I would say as best you can find something physical. And then as we see, uh, Mercury move more strongly into the picture, uh, through mutual reception and then through his out of bounds travel channel it through writing channel it through uh, spoken words singing like whatever communicative vehicle you can use to express that frustration any pent-up anger any kind of aggression uh, or any kind of feelings that you might have around having you know your boundary issues right so thanks everyone for joining me Good luck with this one. It's kind of a tough one, kind of a challenge. And, you know, if you have questions, you can always ping me in the group. Uh, comment on the video feed. I'm happy to help. You can holler, especially if you find you're having uh, a struggle with it personally. We can take a closer look at your chart and see if there's anything specific that you might be able to do to kind of manage these coming weeks a little bit better. And like I said, be super specific about the outcome you want with this new moon just because Mars is such a wild card uh, being out of bounds. And thanks, everyone. God bless, and we'll see you again next time.